Hey guys, today's video is going to be talking about needle valves and the seat out of them. If you look here, I got an assortment of needle valves, the new uh, float pin, which I probably won't need in this, and the actual uh, seat here. And I've been buying these little kits here, that's what most of this stuff's out of. And it comes with uh, two needle valves, the clip for a metal float, and then a new seat. And that little paper tells you how to install the seat. The smooth side is the top. That's the side that the needle valve comes in contact with. And that uh, clip, like I said, is for the uh, metal type of float. And this is uh, the part number. This is prime line, but uh, right here's the Briggs and Stratton number for the uh, this kit. And that's the prime line number. So we're just going to take the 716 bolt out of the bottom here. If you just took this off your mirror, this is going to be full of gas. So. If you feel any roughness when you do this, usually it's that pin or the uh, float. Now at this point, we we'll want to match up the needle valve. If I ain't got a new one, the same style, then there ain't no point in doing it. It appears to be it. This one don't have the rubber tip on it. That one's made a little different. There, I think, nope. We have to use the one without the rubber tip, which shouldn't matter since we're putting a new seat in it anyway. And this one still looks good, so we might try it with the original, just replacing the seat and see what happens. There's your bowl gasket. Yeah, right there you can see it. The one that's in there is black. So, what I'm going to do. There's several different ways you can do this. You might be able to use a pick and get a hold of it. If this don't work, we'll try the other way. And it worked. Right there's the one that came out of it. It appears to be the same. It looks smaller, but it might just be from where it's old. Yeah, it's the same thing. The new one just a little thinner, which Shouldn't matter. We'll see because it seems like that float stuck up a little bit on this anyway. Okay, so now you need a 530 seconds punch. It's just a little bit smaller than the seat, which should let you drive it in there properly. Now, now if yours didn't pop out with this, you can take a little screw, a little sheet metal screw or wood screw, and actually thread into it and just pop it out like that. But the uh, now, there ain't really nothing holding it in anyway. I'm going to try to put this one in like this to get it lined up the right way. Okay, so I got it pretty straight. Now I'm going to take the punch. It in. And it appears to be all the way in. So now you can put the float pin back in there and we'll put the new one in there just to see if it helps. This is kind of tricky because it always wants to come off of it. It's hard to do this and try to show you at the same time on how to do it.
Now what you want to do on your carburetor, you'll have the fuel fitting one here. Hook a fitting, hook a hose onto it and blow through it. Let's see if this uh, works. Okay, you see me do this in other videos. The fittings broke on this and I just ain't took the time to do it. This is just a test carburetor anyway. It's not like it's on a main mower or nothing. But anyway, I'm gonna blow in the in the hose here. And it seems to be working. Now if I have any more problems out of this, I'm gonna replace the float. Because these floats are plastic and the the ethanol and the gas and everything, if you leave gas sitting in there, it seems to warp them a little bit. So if you replace the needle and it don't work, replace the float and the pin and see what it does then. So now we'll go ahead and put it back together. Put the ring on here. And if you're cleaning the carburetor, make sure you take that ring off and any other rubber parts. You see this bump here? I get asked all the time about that. And some of you can actually see like a raised part where the float would be in the shape of the float. It always goes to the the bottom part of the float, the opposite of the needle valve, like that. And you usually have a washer here. This ain't the exact right one, but it seems to be working. And your bolt. So now if you put this back together, you want to test this again. I'll show you how. You got to do it a little bit different now since it's off, since it, the carburetor's back together. You want to get this pretty tight, you'll kind of feel it bottom out, but you don't want to go crazy with it. Okay, so right now, in the normal position, you should be able to blow through the hose. And I can. Turn the carburetor upside down, and you can't blow. So we should be good. Now if you're working on one of the old style carburetors with the metal float, your float's supposed to sit level with the carburetor and you can adjust it with this tab right here. You just bend it out just at least a little bit to uh, adjust it. And sometimes if the float don't want to seal, you can adjust it just a little bit more, get a little more angle on it and it seems to put a little more pressure on the needle valve. This is out of an old one piece float jet. That's what this is for. It's the part number for your old carburetor float. The part number for this particular float for the Walbro LMT, I'll put it in up here. Well guys, if you got any questions or comments about uh, floats and needle valves and needle seats or anything else carburetor related, leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.